Greetings, everyone. Welcome to e and &E Learning Hub, where I'm going to go through and explain the solutions for past paper questions as it relates to measuring instruments. So let's begin. So question five from the 2003 past paper question, part A. It says, what is the purpose of the permanent magnet in a moving coil meter? So here I have a diagram of the moving coil meter to aid with the explanation. So it says the permanent magnet in a moving coil meter is used to provide a magnetic field that interacts with the magnetic field produced by the current flowing through the meter's coil. The interaction causes the coil to rotate and the rotation is proportional to the amount of current passing through the coil. All right, so let's look at the diagram. So here we have the permanent magnet and it have two poles, north and south. Between the two poles, we have the coil. So this is what's going to happen now. So the magnetic field from the permanent magnet will interact with the magnetic field produced by the current passing through the coil here. So this interaction will cause the coil to rotate, right? And that's basically the function or the purpose of the permanent magnet. Right, so create a magnetic field that interacts with the magnetic field that is produced by the current to cause the coil to rotate or turn. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says, how should a voltmeter be connected in a circuit to measure voltage? So the voltmeter should be connected in parallel to measure voltage. So that's it for part B. Part C, it says list four factors which affects the sensitivity of a moving coil meter. So the four factors are number of turns in the coil, the strength of the permanent magnet, the resistance of the coil, and moment of inertia. All right, so that's it for part C. And that's it for this question. So let's move on to the next question. So this is question eight from the 2007 past paper question. So it says figure five shows the internal connection of a measuring instrument. So here is figure five. So part A, it says in your answer booklet, write the number one, two, three, four. And beside each number, write the name of the part of the instrument. So one, that's a single pole double throw switch. Two, so those are the, the resistors, the multipliers. And three, that's the scale. Four, that's the diode. All right, so let's move on to part B now. It says, state the main function of each part labeled one, two, three, and four. All right. So for one, the single pole double throw switch, this is used to switch the range of the instrument to the resistors, multipliers. The function of the resistors is to provide different ranges for the instrument. Three, the scale. So the scale is used to display the measured volumes. And four, the diode. So the function of a diode is to allow current to flow in one direction. In this case, the diode is connected in reverse bias, and it is blocking the current. All right, so that's it for part B. So part C, it says, you are given a measuring instrument which has 1 milliamp full-scale deflection at an internal resistance of 50 ohm. Use this instrument to construct a voltmeter with 10 volt and 25 volt ranges. Calculate the values of the series resistors required for each voltage range. So the series resistors are called multipliers, which is denoted by RM. So RM is equal to V minus, in bracket, I times RA divided by I. So that is 10 volt minus, in bracket, 0.001 amp, multiplied by 50 ohm divided by 0.001 amp, that will give us 10 volt minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.001. That will give us 9,950 ohm. All right, so that's for the first voltage range. For the second voltage range, 
rm is equal to v minus in bracket i times ra divided by i so that is 25 volt minus in bracket 0 0.001 amp times 50 ohm divided by 0 0.001 amp that will give us 25 volt minus 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.001 amp that will give us 24,950 ohm all right so that's it for part c and that's it for this question all right let's move on to the next question so question three from the 2010 past paper question it's part a it says stato characteristics of a moving iron instrument one it can be used to measure ac and dc values two simple in construction compared to the moving coil instrument all right so that's it for part a for part b it says name the types of scale used in the case of part one moving coil instrument so that uses a linear scale part two moving iron instrument so that uses a non-linear scale all right so that's it for part b for part c it says explain with the aid of diagrams how a moving coil instrument can be converted to part one an ammeter so a moving coil instrument can be converted to an ammeter by connecting a resistor in parallel with the instrument so here's a diagram of the resistor in parallel with the instrument so that's it for part one for part two voltmeter so a moving coil instrument can be converted to a voltmeter by connecting a resistor in series with the instrument. So here's a diagram where the instrument is in series with a resistor. All right, so that's it for part 12C and that's it for part C and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So question nine from the 2011 past paper. Part C, it says, state two safety precautions that should be observed when connecting a multimeter in an electrical circuit. One, ensure that the multimeter is connected properly to measure the different types of electrical quantities. Two, ensure to select the correct range for what is to be measured. All right, so that's it for part C. Part D, it says a moving coil meter has a coil of resistance 10 ohms and requires a potential difference of 100 millivolt DC to give full scale deflection. It says calculate the value of part one, the series resistance required to enable the instrument to give full scale deflection of 240 volt. All right, so the first thing that we did was to convert 100 millivolt to volt. And to do that, we divide 100 divided by 1000 and that will give us 0 0.1 volt. The next thing that we need to do is to calculate the current. So I is equal to V divided by R. That will give us 0 0.1 volt divided by 10 ohm. And that will give us 0 0.01 amperes. So the formula, Rm is equal to V minus in bracket, I times Ra divided by I. That will give us 240 volt minus in bracket, 0 0.01 ampere multiplied by 10 ohm divided by 0 0.01. That will give us 23,990 ohm. And that's it for part one. So let's move on to part two. It says to calculate the value of the shunt resistance to convert the meter to an ammeter to read a full scale deflection of 10 amp. All right, so the first thing that we'll have to do is to calculate IE. So IA is equal to VA divided by RA. That will give us 100 millivolt divided by 10 ohm, and that will give us 0 0.01 amp. So next up, here we have the formula to calculate the total current. From this formula, we can get the formula for IS. So IS is equal to I minus IA. That will give us 10 amp minus 0 0.01 amp. That will give us 9.99 ampere. So RS is equal to IA times RA divided by IS. That is 0 0.01 amp multiplied by 10 ohm 
divided by 9.99 ampere, that will give us 0 0.01 ohm. And that's it for part two of D, and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So that is question one from the 2012 past paper. So part A, it says, name two types of electrical measuring instruments using electrical circuits. One, a meter, two, voltmeter. All right, so that's it for part A. So part B, it says, give two methods that are used to dampen the oscillation of the pointer in an analog measuring instrument. So the two methods are pure dashboard dumping and eddy current dumping. So that's it for part B. So part C, it says, sketch the connection diagram of a multi-range moving coil instrument used as part one and ammeter. So here we have the diagram for a multi-range moving coil instrument, and it is able to switch between um, two levels. All right, so that's it for part one. For part two, a voltmeter. So here we have the connection for a multi-range voltmeter where it is able to measure two different um, voltage levels. So that's it for part 12C, and that's it for this question.